Hey everybody, I am Sarah. Welcome back to Overkill Reviews, Banger's weekly heavy metal review show. This week we are focusing on a highly anticipated new album. But before we jump into the review, I must remind you, Patreon, subscribe, money, blah. Okay, let's go. Today I am reviewing a release that probably has the most hype out of any traditional heavy metal album this year. That's right, it's the second full length by Crip Sermon. It's titled The Ruins of Fading Light and it's officially out today via the absolutely fantastic label Dark Descent Records. And before we jump into the review, we'd like to give them a quick shout out because this awesome label is celebrating their 10 year anniversary this year and they have released a slew of awesome records in the past decade, including the album that we're about to review. So you can head to the link in the video description to take advantage of their anniversary sale, which runs from September 12th to September 22nd. All right, let's talk about a release that's been hyped up hardcore by the majority of reviewers. But first, some context. Crip Sermon formed in 2013 in Pe Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and they released their very promising debut demo, Demo 2013, that same year. They've been a grower, not a shower, ever since, and each release is better than the last. Their 2015 full-length debut, Out of the Garden, was a clear step up from their demo, particularly in the vocal department, and they eventually did this flexi-disc cover of Mayhem's De Mysterious Dom Satanis, which was obviously De Mysterious Doom Satanis, and that song, that cover was really great. And while the debut uh, hinted at great things, the hype for this new album is really reaching a fever pitch. Nearly a month before release, my social media feed was full of links saying it was truly spectacular, and that type of constant coverage can really impact your expectations of a release. So, are the reviews true? Is this one of the best Epic Doom albums of the past 25 years? Let's find out. Hands down, the best part of this album is the songwriting. The song structures are excellent, the vocals accentuate the riffs, and the samples help tell a cohesive story, and hell, the guitar work is fantastic. And the fact that the guitar work is fantastic should come as no surprise given that Steve Jansen, Johnson, J-A-N-S-S-O-N, is the guitarist. He's an excellent musician, I have talked about him before. He's been in tons of other stellar bands, including Grindcore, Unrest, Trench Rot, Great Death Metal. I can never say this band's name right. Daiva? D-A-E-V-A? Or D-A-E-V-A? <laughs> yeah. And he's also been in the speed metal band Infiltrator. So this guy's got a really wide scope of abilities and he is truly a fantastic guitarist. He's not the only bright spot. This album just kicks off and it really never relents throughout its entirety. It's got a nice balance of heavy power doom, the transition tracks are super atmospheric, and it's really suited to the Christian Crusader kind of feel and vibe of the album. Next up, I have to mention the vocal approach of the album, which is extremely varied, and I, for that, I have to give props to vocalist Brooks Wilson, who has clearly worked a lot on his range and on his approach. When the demo first landed, I had a little bit of a tough time with it. I mean, I bought it uh, and I listened to it quite a lot, and I think that my primary issue with it was that it reminded me of the 90s American Doom style, which sonically and vocally was starting to uh, kind of reflect the growing popularity of grunge. And when I say that, uh, I would allegorically point to a modern example, which is uh, Kyle of Exhorter, who is now the vocalist for Trouble. He has a gruffness and an intonation to his voice that to me is reminiscent of grunge, and the vocalist of Crip Sermon also has that intonation, albeit infrequently. Throughout the album, he switches between gruff, quiet, loud, massive, and he has that uniquely American delivery. A really good example of his range is in the album's opening song, which is called The Ninth Templar Black Candle Flame, in brackets. <laughs> but enough about that. Let's talk about the best song on the release, which for me is the song called The Snake Handler. The intro has this extremely ominous section. Uh, there's also a backing choir, and it goes into really interesting territory. And in my opinion, the best Crypt Sermon song is from this album. It's called Byzantium. It's the third song. It's beautiful. And uh, this song, Snake Handler, rivals that track. Also, very good sign. We should also mention what I think is Eastern Scales on this release because it's really reminiscent of the American epic 
Doom Band, Solitude Eternus, who I've also talked about very frequently. And uh, those two bands definitely have a lot in common. Altogether, if you're into this band, Crip Sermon, but you're a relative newcomer to the genre, I have some homework. I wanted to suggest some albums because Epic Doom is this huge, diverse, awesome genre. Some of the best releases that, if you dig Crip Sermon, that you should also listen to. Altar of Oblivion, this album is so good. Uh, the newest release by Solstice, Gates of Slumber's Conqueror, and of course, a Canadian inclusion with Funeral Circle. So let's talk about the worst parts now. My personal primary issue with this album is the crispness of the production, which for me does not do it favors. A dude that I've talked about a lot lately, Arthur Rizek, was behind the controls. He was also behind the controls for the debut. And while I'm sure that the way that they produced this album was an artistic choice that the band and he actively decided on, it ended up sounding almost too cold and sharp for my liking. It was the same with the vocal effects. There are spots where they almost sound, not clipped, but like the, the crispness and the effects just ended up sounding a little bit odd to these ears. And obviously, I prefer warmer, more organic production, more old school, but that doesn't mean that the album itself is bad. That's just a personal preference thing. And I understand why they went into that direction uh, because to me it was reminiscent of the production on the new Candlemas. It sounds modern. I think that that was intentional because, you know, this band does have the opportunity to break out the same way that Camus and Paul Bearer did. So I get it. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just not my thing. So where does that leave us? Is this the best Epic Doom album of the last 25 years? Short answer, no, this isn't the best Epic Doom album of 25 years. And to declare that, the day an album comes out to me is silly. Like, give an album some time and space to breathe and maybe in a year or two years, we can definitely make that proclamation. I, I get it, a lot of uh, magazine reviewers, they, they wanna help break the next big band. But sometimes those statements end up sounding kind of overzealous. And for somebody who is deeply, deeply invested in the epic doom genre, that to me was kind of a bit of a deterrent for taking a, a release seriously. And I think that I, I've seen that criticism leveled at tons of bands. When something gets a huge, huge amount of hype, it can mean that people end up being like, oh, do I want to listen to this? It seems a little bit silly. But it's not like the band dictated that response. It's, uh, they don't choose how that response is dictated. And let's be honest, if that was your fucking band that was being called the best thing of 25 years, you'd probably be stoked. But if it's not, then you get butt hurt, right? So that's a, a weakness that the metal scene tends to have. So personally, I think that Ruins of the Fading Light is definitely the best Crypt Sermon album that they've released yet. It's going to be on the vast majority of best of 2019 lists and deservedly so. And uh, it's deserving of the attention that it's getting. Although the production isn't a big win for me personally, the record ends up sounding so big and it's like the hugeness of the album sounds proportionate to the, the response that it is receiving. So these are all very good things. I think that Crip Sermon is on the cusp of a breakout and this album is going to push that, push them into that direction. So for all those reasons, this is getting four skulls out of five here on Overkill Reviews. Now for the shout out. Shout out. It's funny because uh, we did a great Epic Doom album today, but there's another Epic Doom album I would have loved to have given a full review to. That's because the brand new album by Capilla Ardente, which is called The Siege, which is out now via High Roller Records, is the best Epic Doom album of 2019, in my opinion. It features both Claudio and Philippe of Procession. Procession is this fantastic Swedish Chilean Epic Doom band. And uh, Capilla Ardente just released, like they, they've just put out by far their best album. It's, it's quite stunning. The other album that I would like to give a shout out to is by Greek traditional heavy metal band Darklond. The album is called Rise From Death. And these dudes clearly worship at the altar of Jag Panzer, Liege Lord, Omen, Rockus Helm, you know, USPM. And this album is a loving take on that. And you can get it today on Bandcamp. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.